Welcome back to the Benjamin Dixon Morning Show. We are on the clock. Georgia Fort is not with us this morning. She will be back with us tomorrow. Shout out to DJ Exclusive, who is in the background. Brother, I know you're there and we can hear you, but we can't see you today. How you doing, brother? I'm good, brother Ben. How about yourself? I'm doing good, man. We're going to get you back to the people in the audience. Fear not. DJ Exclusive will be back on camera as soon as possible, but he is holding it down on the ones and twos. I want to thank you, brother. I want to shift uh, gears to what is commonly known as May Day. We celebrate on the 1st of May, which is a celebration of labor rights and worker rights all across the globe. Uh, but I want to bring attention particularly to Georgia Ford's coverage of rallies and protesters who join in Minneapolis in support of May Day. Let's take a look at the support's coverage. celebrate the victories of the labor movement and when we remember the people who have struggled for those victories. It's also a day of community. Community like all of you that are here. We reach out and create a space to uplift one another's voices so that the victories of the future are victories for all of us in the struggle and not just for a privileged few. When people of color are under attack, what will we do? When workers are under attack, what will we do? Stand up, fight back! What will we do? Stand up, fight back! Now, it's very easy for us to forget that the reason we have a five day work week uh, is because of labor activists. The reason we have an eight hour work day is because of labor activists. In fact, protests and uh, strikes had to take place and lives were lost. It's sort of disconnected from us, you know, almost 100, over 100 years removed from the flashpoint of the labor movement. But the fact remains that we see worker rights being infringed upon every single day, specifically in this country. We're also tracking now Amazon making uh, or no longer taking COVID-19 as a valid excuse for their workers to miss work. And we see this trend happening all across the country. It's not as though it's not only rather it's not only that they are squeezing us simply for more work and more efficiency while not paying us for that additional efficiency. They're also saying that we have to work during this pandemic and whether we get sick or not, it simply does not matter. All of those phenomenon that you are experiencing, and it's not just Amazon. It's, it's all of these jobs now using the excuse that the CDC gave them to now pressure people to come back into these workplaces. And some who never left now can no longer even use it as a justification for taking sick days. We're getting more information on that as it pertains specifically to Amazon, but it's all a reflection on the fact that labor has been under attack since the beginning of this country, since the foundation of this country. But I digress on that that detail. That's a conversation for another day. We have to keep in front of us the fact that we must be diligent and vigilant as labor. And I want to say it very clearly, like there is, how do I put it on? I I, I said it on Facebook because I'm not doing much talking on Twitter anymore. Um, If you have to wake up and go to work for a living, I don't care how much you make. If you have to go and use your physical labor to live, you're not actually a capitalist. You work for capitalists. And if we don't keep that perspective in mind, we can find ourselves at a point where this is <laughs> this is going to sound dramatic. Where child labor laws, do you not think we are dealing with monsters who are capable of using child labor again? Do I, I, I mean, let's really think about all of the things that they're rolling back when they're trying to roll back the entirety of the 20th century. Keep in mind child labor. Child labor was one of the victories. Stopping child labor was one of the victories of the 20th century. And I guarantee you that we're dealing with the cabal of fascists who have no problem whatsoever. If they need to fill those vacancies at Walmart and McDonald's with people who are underage, because if they're willing to attack every other right, why would we give them the benefit of the doubt on anything else? 
we are in the middle of a class war that has been waged on workers since time immemorial. This has been a nonstop war on labor. It never stopped. Every single day in this country, there are millions of people who give everything that they have, every bit of energy that they have to go work at these warehouses. The warehouse industry is booming and they are taking 12 hours a day out of the lives of people working nonstop shifts back to back day after day, coming out with no time to do anything else but to eat, sleep and wake up and do it again. And those people are considered lazy by the rich elite who sit atop of cosmopolitan Manhattan skyscrapers looking down at the workers saying that they just need to work a little bit harder to climb that economic ladder. Let's not be mistaken, this is not a new phenomenon. This has been a true phenomenon throughout American history. And so as we commemorate and celebrate May Day, I think people need to keep in mind that those, those rights that were earned are consistently and regularly under attack. I do wanna shift gears one more time uh, to Washington DC and discuss the White House plan to push three point uh, or rather $3 billion in electric vehicle battery production. This is one bright spot amidst of all the uh, very sobering environmental news that we have been getting lately. CNBC, CNBC is reporting that on May 2nd, the Biden administration said it will give $3.1 billion in aid to production of electric vehicle batteries in America. The funds are part of the $555 billion bipartisan infrastructure law. NBC News reports that administration officials have uh, cited surging gas prices amid Russia's invasion of Ukraine as a visible reason to begin shifting toward electric vehicles. The director of the National Economic Council said in a statement, we've seen just in recent days, Putin trying to use Russia's energy supply as a weapon against other nations. And that underscores why it's so important that we in the United States reinvest and re-underwrite our own energy security. Gina McCarthy, the National Climate Advisor, said the following, quote, we need a lot of batteries and we want American workers making those batteries right here in America. This is a good move. We should, by all means, that the conversation never ends what we need to do. We know what we need to do as it pertains to this environment. We've known for some time, this is the right step in the right direction. It does bug me though. Absolutely rubs me the wrong way to think that this is somehow tied to war itself. That the impetus behind this is, and, and while we salute and support and stand behind Ukraine, this is something that we should have been doing before Ukraine. This is something that we need to continue doing after Ukraine, because we have a tendency in this country to pour money into situations, into war. And as soon as that war is over, we turn our heads and leave it completely unfunded. So, yes, this is a this is great news and we need to celebrate it as such. But we need more, number one, and we need to make sure that this is not solely tied to conflict because America will spend any number of dollars on war and won't give a dime for everything else that we need. <laughs> California runs uh, almost 100% on renewable electricity. For the first time ever, renewable electricity met nearly 100% of California's demand with much of the energy coming from a large amount of solar power produced along the Interstate 10, uh, an hour east of Coachella Valley. Anna Gonzalez, a spokeswoman for California Independent System Operator, a nonprofit that oversees the state bulk electric power system and transmission lines, told reporters that solar power provided two thirds of the amount needed, reaching 99.87% of load served by all renewables, which broke the previous record. The executive director of Environmental Environment California said the organization and others have worked for 20 years to put the Golden State to completely renewable power via a series of ever tougher mandates. Again, more good news on this front. And we need to make sure that this is replicated across the country. And we need to also bring attention to there's a petition drive uh, that is being pushed by Act TV uh, with the United States Postal Service. We want to make sure that we bring attention to this administration, um, Louis DeJoy, attempting to spend billions of dollars 
on new vehicles that are diesel instead of moving us. And these vehicles, the post office vehicles will be used for decades. And so now Louis DeJoy is trying to pump billions of dollars into vehicles that are going to lock a vast majority of our country's distribution network into fossil fuels when we could be moving towards renewable energy and electric vehicles. The opportunity is clearly there for them, but they are not taking it. And that speaks volumes as to how far we have to go. What is happening in California is amazing. It is record breaking. It is groundbreaking, but we are so far removed from where we actually need to be. So we have to absolutely keep our eye on that. Coming up at 915, I will be speaking with Professor Matt Sinkowitz about his new book, along with what's going on in Russia and Ukraine. The Russia foreign minister making statements about Vladimir Zelensky, um, referencing him to be analogous to Hitler. Um, despite his Jewish heritage and the comments that the foreign ministers made were uh, quite repulsive. We'll be speaking with Professor Matt Sinkowitz about that in 915. And at 930, we'll be speaking with Anoa Changa about this uh, alarming news coming out of the Supreme Court. A draft decision, a draft opinion was leaked, which is in and of itself uh, unheard of, unprecedented, a leak of a draft opinion. So the opinion is not Final. However, the opinion shows a majority of the Supreme Court deciding to unequivocally overturn Roe versus Wade, which is or rather which has been the crown jewel of the theocratic fascists, the movement in this country that absolutely wants to dominate based on their very specific view of religion and their very specific view of morality and their very specific view of Christ. They want to dominate this system, and this was one of their plans for a very long time. So we're going to discuss the political implications and what it means for women, um, what it means for women all across this country, as well as what it means for organizing, because something like this does not happen overnight. This plan has been meticulously executed by the right wing in this country and they are now within, you know, clinching distance of getting their victory. But it doesn't mean that it has to be a final victory. So we're going to talk about how do we organize? How do we organize and what has to be done? What are the very specific steps to undo this? Because while a lot of people are upset this morning, and I was very upset last night. I mean, I just I actually reinstalled Twitter just to rant about it because it's so disturbing that we are at this stage now. But here we are. We can't just be upset about what happened. Uh, we have to absolutely be prepared to fight back. Um, and so we're gonna discuss organizing and what do we need from our political leaders? Because here's one final note, because I'm gonna take another break. It's gonna be a break heavy day today. It's just one of those mornings. The, the real deal is, is that if we do not get rid of the filibuster and if we don't get politicians who are willing to pack and stack and expand the court then we're going to be dealing with decisions like this for the rest of our lives. When Ruth Bader Ginsburg decided not to retire, and then ultimately she died, giving that pick to Donald Trump, the rest was history. That was the, decide that was the flashpoint. When the balance of power went to the conservative side and that seat was given to Amy Coney Barrett, of all people, we knew that this was going to be the result. I also know that they're not going to stop with a woman's right to choose. They're not going to stop until their world, their worldview, their, their, their aspirations. I mean, if I could summarize it before I go to break, they don't want anybody to be LGBTQ except for those that are closetly LGBTQ in their own circles all those pastors who preach against it, they're anti-LGBTQ until they cut off their cameras, but they want to outlaw anybody's sexual preference that they don't approve of. They want to outlaw our right to vote if our right to vote ever threatens their power. They were willing to overthrow this democracy on January 6th and they're still trying to do so. 
that's just the surface of it. The economic parts of it, we already know that they want to continue to exploit our labor. They want to continue to keep us working for $7.25 an hour when we know sure as hell that our work, we are working at efficiencies of at least $22 an hour. If workers were paid how efficiently they work, they would be making nearly $22 to $25 an hour. But they have successfully kept us at $7.25 at a federal uh, minimum wage. And they want that to continue. And they want us to be, call us the N-word without getting canceled. I mean, it really is a cabal of people who are both ambitious through their desire to dominate society, as well as ridiculous in how fatuously ignorant they are. Those are the people who have power. Those are the people who are behind this Roe versus Wade decision. Those are the people who have no compunction about rewriting the constitution. They have made it clear the constitution is an impediment to their victory. Therefore, that's the next thing that they're going to try to overthrow. Um, sorry, Dr. Mack, I know you, you, you get tired of my right wing you know, right wing conspiracies. But as I the, the more the longer I live, my conspiracies seem to be adding up. These people are going for the kill. They're not playing games with us Democrats. And so my last thing is to ask the Democrats, are you ready to fight them? Because if you're not ready to fight them, then you need sure as hell need to get out the way because they are not only talking about getting victory in Washington, D.C. They want to change the entirety of this country, which means they want to change the entirety of how my family works and how my neighborhood works. And so we need people who are going to go to Washington, D.C. and into all these state capitals and chase these traitors out. Because the very last thing that's standing in their way is not just black people. It is the Constitution. And I guarantee you they'll overthrow that to get power. We'll be back with more of the morning show. We're coming in. We're going out. But we're going to keep these stories ahead of us because there are so many critical issues. And then maybe we get DJ exclusive in here to lighten the load, to give us a dad joke or something. Otherwise, I'm going to call for a full on. <laughs> anyway, take us to break, Dwayne. We'll be back. With more of the Benjamin Dixon Morning Show. I told y'all don't leave me here by myself. We get kind of revolutionary when I'm on the screen by myself. We'll be back after this. 